What is Barnard's star, and will it collide with our sun? Are we in danger of a star collision with Barnard's star? Barnard's star is a red dwarf star located in the constellation Ophiuchus, approximately six light years away from our solar system. It's named after the American astronomer Edward Emerson Barnard, who discovered its high proper motion in 1916. In recent years, there has been speculation about whether Barnard's star will collide with our Sun. We will explore the characteristics of Barnard's star, its history of discovery, and the current research on this star. It is one of the closest stars to our solar system. Barnard's star has captivated scientists and space enthusiasts alike for decades. But what is this mysterious star? And could it pose a threat to our own star? Join us as we dive deep into the science behind Barnard's star and explore the potential for a collision that could impact the entire solar system. Characteristics of Barnard's star Barnard's star is a relatively small star with a mass of about 0.17 solar masses and a radius of approximately 0.2 solar radii. It is about one-sixth the size of our Sun and its surface temperature is around 3100 Kelvin, which makes it much cooler than the Sun. This star is also known for its high, proper motion, which means it moves quickly across the sky relative to other stars. Barnard's star has been extensively studied by astronomers and its properties have been used to make important discoveries about red dwarf stars. For example, scientists have found that red dwarfs are much more common in the galaxy than other types of stars. They also tend to have much longer lifetimes than more massive stars like the Sun. Because Barnard's star is one of the closest red dwarfs to us, it provides a great opportunity to study these stars in more detail. Discovery of Barnard's Star Barnard's star was discovered by Edward Emerson Barnard in 1916. Barnard was a prolific astronomer who made significant contributions to our understanding of the universe. He discovered many comets, stars, and nebulae during his career. Barnard's discovery of Barnard's star was notable because it had a very high proper motion, which meant it was moving quickly across the sky. This made it difficult to detect and observe, but Barnard was able to use his expertise in astronomical photography to find it. In the decades following Barnard's discovery, astronomers continued to study this star and gather more information about its properties. In 1963, it was discovered that Barnard's star had a relatively large proper motion, which made it a prime target for studying the effects of stellar parallax. This technique involves measuring the apparent shift in a star's position as the Earth orbits the Sun. By using this method, astronomers were able to accurately determine the distance to Barnard's star. In the years that followed, astronomers continued to study Barnard's star using a variety of techniques, including radial velocity measurements and photometry. These studies provided valuable insights into the properties of this star and helped scientists better understand red dwarf stars as a whole. The Possibility of a Collision with Our Sun One of the most intriguing questions surrounding Barnard's star is whether it will collide with our Sun. There has been some speculation about this possibility in recent years, but the likelihood of a collision is extremely low. The idea of a star colliding with our Sun may seem far-fetched, but it's not entirely impossible. In fact, there is evidence that such collisions have happened in the past, and they could happen in the future. However, the likelihood of Barnard's star colliding with our Sun is extremely low. Firstly, it's important to note that stars are constantly moving through space. Our Sun is also moving, and it's currently orbiting the center of the Milky Way galaxy at a speed of about 220 km per second. Barnard's star is also moving, and it is currently moving in a different direction than our Sun. The two stars are not on a collision course, and they are not expected to cross paths anytime soon. Secondly, the probability of a star colliding with another star is very low. Stars are very far apart from each other, and the chance of two stars coming close enough to collide is extremely rare. Even if Barnard's star and our Sun were on a collision course, the probability of a collision happening is incredibly small. Finally, even if a collision were to occur between Barnard's star and our Sun, the consequences would not be as catastrophic as one might think. 
stars are mostly made up of empty space. And when two stars collide, the chances of the planets around them being destroyed are low. It is likely that the orbits of the planets in both systems would be disturbed, but it is unlikely that any planets would be destroyed. Exoplanet Barnard's Star B However, the study of Barnard's star is still important for other reasons. It provides a valuable opportunity for astronomers to study red dwarf stars, which are the most common type of star in the galaxy. Red dwarfs are known to host a high percentage of Earth-sized planets, and the discovery of Barnard's star B, for example, has spurred further investigation into whether there may be habitable planets orbiting this star. In 2018, astronomers announced the discovery of a candidate planet orbiting Barnard's star named Barnard's star B, which is supposed to be a cold, rocky planet with a mass about three times that of Earth. While not habitable, the discovery of this planet is still significant, as it is one of the closest exoplanets to our solar system and provides an opportunity to study the properties of rocky planets outside our solar system. Red Dwarfs Furthermore, studying Barnard's star can also provide insights into the properties of red dwarf stars, which are known for their flares and other activity. So what are red dwarfs? Red dwarfs are the most common type of star in the Milky Way galaxy, making up about 70% of all stars. These stars are smaller and cooler than other types of stars such as the Sun, and they have a mass ranging from about 0.08 to 0.5 times that of the Sun. Despite their small size, red dwarfs can live for trillions of years, making them some of the longest-lived objects in the universe. Red dwarfs get their name from their color, which is reddish in appearance. This is because they emit most of their light in the infrared part of the spectrum, rather than in the visible part of the spectrum. Red dwarfs are also known as M dwarfs, as they are classified as type M stars based on their spectra. One of the most interesting properties of red dwarfs is their habitable zones. The habitable zone of a star is the region around it where the temperature is just right for liquid water to exist on the surface of a planet. Because red dwarfs are smaller and cooler than other types of stars, their habitable zones are much closer to the star. In fact, some red dwarfs have habitable zones that are so close to the star that a planet in this zone would orbit the star in just a few days. Despite the potential for habitable planets around red dwarfs, there are also some challenges associated with these stars. Red dwarfs are known to be highly variable, with frequent flares and other activity that can be harmful to any planets in their habitable zones. In addition, the energy output of red dwarfs is much lower than that of other types of stars, which means that any planets in their habitable zones would have to be much closer to the star in order to receive enough energy for life to exist. By studying the activity of Barnard's star, astronomers can better understand the behavior of these stars and how it may impact the potential for habitable planets around them. Pop Culture In addition to its scientific significance, Barnard's star also holds a special place in popular culture. It has been referred in numerous works of science fiction, including the novel The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and the television series Star Trek. Like, for example, in the Next Generation episode The Lost, the Enterprise was sent to investigate a phenomenon near Barnard's star, which caused the ship's crew to lose their sense of direction. The episode Thine Own Self also references Barnard's star as the location of a distant planet where a deadly virus had wiped out an entire civilization. SETI The star has also been the subject of speculation about the possibility of extraterrestrial life as it is one of the closest stars to our solar system and is therefore a potential target for SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Programs. In 1960, astronomer Frank Drake used the newly developed technique of radio astronomy to search for signals from intelligent life beyond Earth. The project known as Project Ozma was conducted using the Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia, and one of the targets was Barnard Star. Unfortunately, no signals were detected. Since then, Barnard's star has been the subject of several other SETI searches, including the SETI Institute's Project Phoenix, which used the Arecibo Observatory to scan the star for signals. 
While none of these searches have yet turned up any conclusive evidence of extraterrestrial life, the continued interest in Barnard's star demonstrates its potential as a target for future searches. Barnard's star is a fascinating object of study for astronomers and a subject of interest for the general public. Its discovery by Edward Emerson Barnard over a century ago marked an important milestone in the study of stars, and its properties have continued to provide valuable insights into the behavior of red dwarf stars. While the possibility of a collision with our Sun is extremely low, the study of Barnard's star remains important for its potential to reveal the properties of exoplanets and the behavior of red dwarf stars. As technology continues to advance, it is likely that we will continue to learn more about this star and the mysteries of the universe it can help to unravel.